you were the way you This lecture will be given by Dr. Saeed Akhtar. Dr. Saeed Akhtar is a consultant urologist at Shifa International Hospital. He is a founder head of Pakistan Kidney Institute. In addition to this, he has been doing a lot of work for the community, like funding, assembling, and distribution of food and medical aid to the displaced people of Sawat and the flood victims. And somehow, on top of all of this, he is a certified pilot as well. With this, I would like to invite Dr. Saeed Akhtar to please come on stage and talk to us about how to manage community work alongside a busy profession. Auz billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilafi al-layli wal nahari la ayat li ulul al-bab allazina yazkuruna allaha qiyaman wa qu'udan wa ala junubihim wa yatafakkaruna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batila subhanaka fa qina azab an-nar sadaqallahu alazim Uh, I welcome you all uh, to this day of Shifa and I also realize that amongst the audience today there are people who are physicians, medical students, but there are also people who are not doctors or medical students and they want to pursue a very diverse sort of background and uh, very different sort of careers in their lives. What I'll try to do in next 20 minutes is to try to sort of give you a perspective of what life is. And no matter what profession do you want to go into, no matter what you want to be, if you keep your focus straight, it'll help you become a good human being, a good Muslim, and a good person in the society in general. And we can only try and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put but are going to everything that we are saying today. Uh, the ayah that I just recited in front of you is a very, very powerful ayah from Quran. This is one of the ayahs in the end of Surah Ali Imran. And let me just take you with you, with, with, through the meanings. And one of the reasons when I sort of reflect about where we are as a Muslim ummah, where we are as, as a society, actually uh, this ayah has a lot to say, and, and the reason I'm, I'm addressing you today is that I want you to be different than what our generations have done, because that's where I think the success is. And it says in Quran, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard. Indeed, in the creation of heavens and the earth, waqtilafil layli wa nahar, and the difference between the night and the day. The ayatun li ulil albab are the signs for people who ponder. There are a lot of signs around us, but it's not visible to everybody. The only people who can see them are the people who ponder. And then Allah Ta'ala is telling us who are the people who ponder. Allah these are the people. Yazkurun Allah, they, they always think of Allah. They're always wondering about Allah. Qayaman wa qu'udan wa ala junubihim, while they're standing or they're sitting or they're lying down. These are only three postures a human can acquire. Either we are standing, sitting or lying down. So what it means is at every second of our life, they're always thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they constantly ponder about the heavens and the earth and what's going on, who are we, why are we here, what are our responsibilities. Rabbana, after that, as soon as they, they have they've thought about all this, their immediate response is, Rabbana ma khalaqta haza batil. So as soon as they, they think about what's going on around us, so they automatically, from within, the response comes, O oh, our Lord, you have not just created this in vain. Subhanaka, glory be to you. And the last response Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, faqina azab an nar, so protect us from the hellfire. Now, I feel that there's a big message in this ayah. And the message is that at a given time, 
whether we are in a classroom, or I'm in the operating room, or I'm flying a plane, or you're driving on the road, we have to be constantly aware that there's a God who's watching us, who's looking at us, and we are accountable to Him. And if, if you develop this habit at every given second of your life, you sort of develop reflexes which are going to be very, very positive reflexes. They'll make you think. They'll make you do things. They'll make you do things beyond you. So, for example, if you're a doctor, and I think a lot of you will be doctor either today or tomorrow, then our job does not finish as a doctor if I've just seen my patients. I'm a very busy practitioner. But if my whole focus becomes, I have to make a lot of money, then I think I might as well not be a doctor. I might as well go and rob a bank and just be rich, if that's the aim of my life. There's a hadith of Prophet Wasallam that it says, Khairun nas man yan nas. The best people amongst you are who benefit others. So as a doctor, in the middle of the night, I get a call that somebody is dying and I rush to the hospital and I try to save a life. At that time, two things can happen. One, I'm thinking that, oh, so I'm going to do this operation and I'm going to make 20,000 rupees or a lakh rupees. Or the other thing, the concern at the back of my mind is somebody out there is hurting who needs my help, I go and help him. Okay, and maybe patient, May have, a, may, may have some money, so money will come. Maybe may, may he doesn't have the money, so that's okay. So the second approach is the right approach. Because there's out somebody, and remember one thing, no matter what you become, on the day of judgment, when I will be asked, and I will be examined, and I'll be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is not going to ask me, uh, why did you not do such and such things in your life? He says, well, there was a man who was there. And he could benefit from your capability and just because he did not have money, you turned him down? How did that happen? Or you're an engineer. Or who, whatever profession you are in. The point I'm trying to make is that if you are a person who ponder, who thinks, who cares, who looks around, looks at the society. And I'll tell you one thing which is very, very important. When you help people, trust me, this is the gist of my life. And the help people does not mean that only feeding somebody. Help people can be in so many ways. When you're teaching students, when you're teaching residents, when you are uh, guiding your own child, if you're married and you have children, if you're helping somebody do a little thing, if you're just help, helping somebody cross the road, actually it seems that like you're benefiting others. Maybe yes, maybe no. Actually the person that you're benefiting is yourself. This is my take home message for all of you guys. Anytime you do a good deed and you do a good deed with good intentions, you're not helping anybody else, you're just helping yourself. And trust me, this will reflect not only in your life, but also the most importantly, at a time when you would need every single penny to rescue from hellfire. And you will not be having a lot of pennies if you're not done the good deeds. So the gist of my conversation today and I want to share a couple of examples with you. For example, the first time I ever responded to a natural emergency uh, was this tsunami in, in Indonesia in 2004. It was an unbelievable experience of my life. I mean, we went there and this entire town had been completely devastated and the stench of dead and the the filth was so much that it was just impossible to breathe. And there was a lot of, um, uh, there's a, there was a lot of um, uh, this oil which had spilled, the chemical spill, which would just burn your eyes. It was unbelievable. 
And yet there were people, you know, who were either sick or who, who needed surgeries and who needed whatever. And just being there was such a rich and, and fulfilling experience that I can't just put in words. You know, you're there, people are there, and you, all of a sudden you realize that, you know, subhanAllah, God has made you in a giving position. I could be part of the victim of those people who, who needed food or who needed medical help. But the first thing was that I was healthy, I could do things over there, I could interact with the people. Same experience when the earthquake in Pakistan came, it was one of the best experiences of my life. We were out there in the field for almost two months straight. And we, know we had done a lot of flights between here, took a lot of stuff. And I can never forget, never forget our first landing in a small place called Kathai, where we, we went with a, a helicopter loaded with, with food because we had heard that because of all the road blockades and stuff, people have not had food for two weeks. <clears throat> And I've seen a lot of desperate scenes in my life, but this was one of the most moving scenes that, you know, if it was not for those army men who were down on the ground protecting us, you know, we could have been lynched. I have never seen people so desperate for food. I mean, these are the guys who had not eaten for days and days and days. And the minute our helicopter landed, I mean, they just wanted to grab whatever they could just to eat. SubhanAllah, God gives us food every day. Every morning you wake up and you know, mom has made food for you. Or something is available. So how about those people who don't get the food? And this is not just story of Banda Aceh or, or Kashmir struck by earthquake. This is a story of Pakistan. This is a story around us every day. <coughs> there are a lot of kids who probably go home hungry. Similarly, you know, when we went to Gaza, Again, very rich experience. I mean, I have now not seen, the, the biggest thing that I learned in Gaza was the resilience, the lesson that if you have dignity as a nation, you can fight anybody. We just saw the example of Hosni Mubarak falling down. This is exactly what we saw in, in Gaza. This was the first day when, when Egyptians would not let us cross the border. We stayed on the border for one night we said we are not going to go back. Next morning we were there again. Somehow we maneuvered our way through and went into Gaza. And the scene was so beautiful. This was the first day after the war. And these little girls wearing scarves were going to school like nothing has happened. And I said to our uh, Palestinian uh, helper, I said, well, I thought you guys were in war. He said, but yeah, this is life. It was yesterday, this is today. And every building, every building was riddled with bullets. These, you know, if you understand the anatomy of Gaza, it's a 4 by 41 kilometer strip, which on one side of the strip uh, connects with Egypt, one side is the sea, and two sides is Israel. So they have b uh, barricaded them so badly for years, the food was not coming in. They wanted to just break their will. And these guys said, we are not going to break down no matter what. Every building was riddled with bullets. I mean, you could not see hospitals. They bombarded hospitals. They bombarded schools. They bombarded every building that, that you could envision. So it was whatever we could do. And we did a lot of surgeries there. But I think that was nothing. What I, I gained as a result of that experience was a tremendous uh, feeling that, you know, what is human dignity? What is self-respect? And the nations that nobody can subdue, no matter what. I, if I could have, if I've done a PhD at Harvard, I could have not gotten that lesson that I got in two weeks. So point I'm making to all of you, you are the leaders of the future. You are the people who will be in the leading positions. That when you give, actually you're not giving, you're t receiving. And you'll receive here, and most importantly, you'll receive in life hereafter. And I want to end my conversation, and I, I want for about next 10 minutes, I want to take some questions from you folks. I want to, to, to share a, a hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi It's a very long hadith, but it's a very, very powerful gist. And the hadith is that on the Day of Judgment, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will ask a man, he says, you know, I came to you hungry. 
and you did not feed me. And the man will say, well, Allah, how can you be hungry? He said, yeah, no, but there was a man who came to you. He was hungry. He was my, my, my slave. You didn't feed him. And he, there'll be questions after questions, and I came without clothes, and you didn't, uh, you didn't clothe me, and I came, etc., etc. So it's a long hadith, but the gist is the same. And when I apply that to myself, Allah will ask me, well, there was a poor patient who came, and you didn't take care of me. And I say, well, I'm sorry, but I didn't because I was just running out of the money. Or I can be somebody and say, okay, no, I tried to take care of it. And you could be an engineer, or you can be a lawyer, or you could be a police officer, or you could be whatever you are. But if you understand the concept of success, this is the concept of success. Not only in this life, but in the, in the most important in the life hereafter. So my friends, the, the life that you are starting today, I am reflecting back a few years, maybe a couple of decades. I was in the same shoes as you are. God has been very, very kind and I have achieved a lot of stuff only because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the most important thing that I have learned in this entire time is that the most successful person is the one that Quran describes that fucking azab and nar the one whoever has been saved from the hellfire he is the most successful person and I want all of us to be those successful people and I want you to be that successful people and remember the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu the best people amongst you are who benefit others so if you take a little effort to help your brother or sister Allah is going to reward you for that. So with that, if you ever face, see uh, somebody in distress, be it a nation, be it a person, individual, be it a community, be it an earthquake, be it a man-made disaster, a natural disaster, just respond, help. Trust me, you help and somebody will help you when you're in need. See, I uh, started an organization called Life Saver Foundation in Pakistan. And, and Dr. Hasib was just teaching you uh, basic life support. By the grace of God, we have trained 10,000 people across Pakistan in basic life support. And whenever I go for these lectures, I always tell people that I'm doing this for a selfish reason. That someday, if I am in need of an emergency resuscitation, maybe somebody is around to help me. If my mother or my father or my brother or sister is in need of a um, emergency help, somebody will help me because I am helping somebody. This is the, the, the way the cycle of nature is. So, most important message, you are starting your careers in whatever role you, you want to be. I want you to be successful. I pray for you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you successful. But most importantly, what I really want for, for you folks is to get the right perspective of the success. Because success is not money. A lot of people who have a lot of money, but they can't get a good night's sleep. Success is honor in, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever has been honored in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything else is, is immaterial. And trust me, people will give you honor in this world also. But that is again immaterial. Even people don't give you honor in this world. But you have honor in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the success. But right now, uh, it almost seems like we are a dead nation, even though we are not a dead nation. And, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has very strange ways of doing things. Things happen uh, when, when you expect them the least. So I am a very optimistic person. Islam teaches you a lot of optimism. Amongst all the darkness that we are, we have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we, we, uh, we know that uh, uh, things will change. But the most important thing out of the whole thing is what are we doing as an individual? What are you doing? What, what, are, what is she doing? And what is he doing? And what am I doing? So the most important thing here, and I'll tell you why we are where we are. I, I recited the ayah to you. The most important thing that we have got, gotten away from is for the standing for the truth, from, for our petty gains. And that's why as a nation, we have really declined. See, if you go back to some of our predecessors like Iqbal, the entire concept of the philosophy of Iqbal was khudi, the self-esteem. And you don't have self-esteem. America says, we're going to cut down your grant if you don't release Raymond Davis. 
we should say go to hell and we can survive on our own. You know, I was in, 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 in Texas at one time and we had this gentleman from uh, Sudan and they had put on some sections on sanctions on Sudan for, for some reasons and the guy said, you know what, not up? After those sanctions, we have actually learned how to grow wheat and other stuff and we are totally independent for our food. I think that's what probably what we need. But the most important thing is the, the, the kids like you and, and the, the people like you need to stand for the truth in your individual life. And that will give you the strength of the character. The most important thing is the strength of character. You can talk all day, but if you don't practice what you're saying, it's all garbage. So we have to develop the strength.